have to be sitting when I put my shoes on or get dressed. What exercises can I do to begin doing this in standing again? This is an awesome question. The first thing I would say is that putting your shoes on in standing, we're going to go through a process as to how to do that. But my question is, is it really necessary? Like if I have a chair, I would probably am going to sit down in a chair if, if I have the option when I'm putting my shoes on. But if there is the scenario where you just absolutely don't have a chair and you need to put your shoes on in standing, first thing I would say is probably have shoes that don't have laces on them because they're really it's really hard to reach down to tie your shoes but the other thing you could do is buy a long handled shoehorn and then another kind of modification is just to kind of lean up against a wall if you do need to reach down to put your shoes on but a long handled shoehorn is probably the best fix for putting your shoes on in standing now if you want to really practice on putting your shoes on in standing you don't want to sit I would say break that skill down into the component steps that you need to be able to do and the most important component step is you have to be able to stand on one leg for I would say at least 15 seconds so that's enough time to kind of slide your foot into a shoe and just put the conditions in place that you want to be able to do them in so if you can hold on to a device when you do it, then practice that way. If you want to relearn how to do that without having to touch anything, then of course practice that way. But single leg standing would probably be the most valuable skill to learning how to put your shoes on in standing. Now, when we get to dressing, this is also extremely common as far as a goal that most people want. So I'd say, again, we're gonna break that skill down. So let's go with putting pants on. So what are the things that you need to be able to do to put pants on? You have to be able to stand on one leg for at least 10 to 15 seconds. And you have to be able to do it on both legs. So you can't just stand on your strong leg or your less involved leg. You have to be able to stand on each leg. So that's one thing that you have to work on. The other thing that you have to be able to do is you have to be able to bring your feet to your hands and your hands to your feet. So there's some combination of those two things that need to go together. So one thing is you have to have the range of motion, you have to have the hip mobility to be able to do that. And you have to feel comfortable lifting one leg up off the ground and bringing it up towards your hands and vice versa, bending forward and standing on one leg and reaching down towards your feet. So then once you have those components, what does it actually take to actually put the pants on? You have to be able to thread your legs. So putting your leg through an opening and pulling those pants up over your over your bottom. So one thing I like to do for that is either buy some like extra large scrub pants. So in therapy when we do this, that's helpful because the opening is really big, so it makes it a little bit easier at the start. Now, there is one thing that you have to be mindful of that is a huge risk is that once you get one leg into the pants, that your legs get tangled around the pants and you might lose your balance. So keep that in mind that once you get that leg into those pants, that there is that risk that your legs are going to get tangled up. So the way that I address that is I just use a TheraBand loop. So you guys see me use those on uh, in a lot of the YouTube videos and using a TheraBand loop or a Pilates ring to thread your legs in standing is a better first step because you don't have that problem where your leg is going to get in there and then it's going to get tangled up in the pant leg. So two ways to modify it just in summary or to practice it is really big pants at first so you have a bigger opening to thread your legs through and maybe using a TheraBand loop. And with a TheraBand loop, you just, in standing, you put one leg in, you put the other leg in, and then you practice getting that TheraBand loop all the way up around your waist. Now, two other modifications that you can make, like in the intermediate time of getting good at threading your legs through the pants and sitting and actually doing that in standing is to either use a high stool pushed against a wall. That's kind of like middle standing, so you're kind of standing, but your butt is still supported. That would be one intermediate step between going from sitting to standing. The other one is kind of what I call like wall propping. Again, just kind of leaning up against a wall to do it might be helpful as well. 
just to give you that little bit of security so that you can really focus on one task at a time. Remember, there's two things going on. You're having to maintain your balance. You need the hip, hip flexibility and strength to lift your leg and bring it up towards your chest. And you have to have good accuracy with getting your leg into that pant leg. So you've got all these things going on, leaning up against a wall or doing that half standing method just kind of will eliminate one so you can focus on those other components before putting it all together. And then now when it comes to upper body dressing, although I don't think this is as much of an issue that people can't do it in standing or that they want to work on it in standing, um, but if that is you and you want to put your shirt on in standing, the one most critical skill that you need to be able to do is stand with your eyes closed, especially when you're pulling on shirts over your head. Our eyes are so critical for our balance and what you don't realize is that when you're, that shirt is over your head, you can't see anything, it really dis can disrupt your balance. So being able to stand with your eyes closed for 10 seconds, not just good for dressing, but also good for showering if you eventually want to stand to take a shower. You know, you close your eyes if water kind of runs down your face. So it's a great skill to practice standing with your eyes closed for both dressing, putting a shirt on and standing, and showering. But that was an excellent question, so I hope that gave you some ideas of ways to incorporate or things you can do to incorporate into your home exercise program to reach that goal. If you liked that video and you want to learn more exercises on how to improve your walking, definitely check out this video over here or that video over there. If you want even more help, check out our gold membership program where you'll get access to over 300 exercises that are not here on YouTube, as well as access to our monthly lives where you can get your questions answered.